But now to go back to our original intent of let's sculpt a face, or let's sculpt a head, what we can do is we can go back in here, the arrow, it's going to be a little bit difficult to sculpt a head out of this shape. We can do it, but I think we have better alternatives. So instead of that arrow, I'm going to go back in here to this palette, and I'm going to select the sphere. Now we don't lose the arrow. The arrow is actually still over here. You're going to see there's an arrow 3D and an arrow 3D1. Basically, it just made a copy of your original arrow primitive and put it over here that you can select. So if you want to go back to your arrow, just click it. If you want to go to that sphere, you can click that. And again, because we chose these, it's going to put it over here for quick access. So if we went in here and did a star or a helix or a spiral, it's just going to keep spitting them over here. And again, these are all primitives, minus this one. You're going to see this one's called Polymesh 3D. We'll get to that in a second. But all of these are primitives. So what does that mean? Well, if for instance I grab this Helix 3D, and again you can go in here to your palette, you can check the Helix 3D, then it goes ahead and puts it on our canvas. If for some reason you went out of edit mode accidentally, uh, and this is a good thing to bring up, you can hit always switch, and that'll go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to switch out of edit mode, uh, and that goes ahead and drops it on your canvas. So now if you, again, if you keep dragging this on your canvas, it's just going to keep dragging copies of your Helix. Hit control N to clear your canvas, drag that Helix out, go back into edit mode or hit T on your keyboard for the hotkey and now you have a helix primitive. Again now we know how to navigate around our scene so we can go ahead and rotate, uh, snap to different views, all that good stuff. However because it's a primitive if I take the tool menu which I already have docked and I go down here to the very bottom there's an initialize menu. If I click that it's going to open up and there's going to be some options in here. Now I'm just going to interject in here really quickly to talk about menu navigation. Uh, we have a menu over here and if I just click and drag in this gray area I can zoom around this menu. I can hold down shift and I can open up multiple menus in here. So I can open up subtool and open up sub menus as well. So here's merge and project and extract etc. So this could end up getting pretty long depending on how many of these you open. And again I'm holding down shift to open multiple menus and then holding down shift to close these. But the big takeaway here is I'm clicking in this gray area anywhere in here really where there's a gray area, just click and drag and that'll allow you to navigate up and down those menus. So basically every primitive in ZBrush has an initialized state. That means I can come in here and I can I can basically play around with some of these settings. So right here we have coverage, so as I do this I can click this, this is basically a slider. So to change a numeric value I can tap on the slider and then type in a number like 10, hit enter and then I'll go ahead and put that in there. While it's still highlighted, I can say 20, hit enter, or maybe put this down to five, hit enter. Or like I said before, I can just click and drag the slider. Now you're gonna see if I tap on the slider once, you may see a little dim slider here at the top. That's actually a secondary slider that'll give you more control. So this one down here, this main slider, will give you very coarse control. This one up here will give you very fine control. Now that's not there for every slider, but for a lot of sliders that's the case. Let's go ahead and tap the slider here, and again we'll type in 5. You're going to see right here we have some profile options, uh, and this is going to be a graph. So whenever you see things that look like this, like a little curve in here, or maybe a full curve, if you just tap on that, that's going to open up a graph. Now right now you're going to see we have basically a full graph, so if I take this one here, and there's two dots, so if I take this right dot and drag it, it's going to manipulate our object take this left dot and drag it, it's going to change. If I just click on our graph and pull, it's going to add a new dot and it's going to change our graph shape. Now around this dot we just created is a fall off, so you can make that a sharper or a softer fall off. And in fact if we take this dot and we drag off and then drag back on without letting go, it'll turn it into a linear interpolation. If we do it again, just drag off and drag back on without letting go, or without letting up on our tablet, you're going to see it'll go back to more of a Bezier type curve. If we want to delete this altogether, like if you went through here and you just tapped and made a bunch of dots you don't like, just take that dot and drag it off, and you'll be able to get rid of all of these. If you want to reset your curve to just a regular line, just hit this reset button. And if you remember the original profile curve was this dot right here all the way up. If we click down here on thickness you're going to see the profile collapses and then the thickness opens. Same thing for radius, if we tap this one you're going to see radius opens. If you want to close this you can actually click this little close arrow and that will go ahead and 
close that up for us. And then of course we can just tap back on radius. This one's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So if I hold down shift and snap to the side, you're gonna see instead of going straight down in a corkscrew or a DNA strand, it actually kind of bulges out in the middle. That's being controlled by this profile right here. If I take this dot and move it down, it's going to decrease that profile. And if I keep dragging down, it's gonna go from thick to thin to thick, which you can see here, thick to thin to thick. If I wanna get rid of this entirely, remember, you can just take this dot and drag it off. And now it goes straight down because this line is straight across. If I wanna go from thick to thin, I can take this one and move it up. I can move this one down, or I can move this one up and move this one down. I can click reset, and now it's going from very thin to very thick. And if I want, I can just move this up and I can move this one down to match. You see there's a lot more options in here. For instance, if you wanna copy this curve to another area or you wanna save it, if you wanna flip horizontal and vertically, if I hit reset and then flip horizontal and vertical, you're gonna see it's just gonna flip that curve. You can undo back to where you were when you started. And some of these up here come in handy when we do like material settings, but we're not gonna get into those right now. If we wanna control the amount of geometry on our object, you're gonna see Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. I'm gonna go down here to where it says polyframe. You can hit shift F or you can click this button here. You can see it's gonna draw lines on our object. So if I go over here and change this S divide, just click and drag, you're gonna see that's going to change the divides vertically here. And then down the path of the helix, if I go over here to the L divides and crank that up, it's gonna give me more resolution if I go to the right. And of course, less resolution if I go to the left. So you can kind of fine tune your primitives using these initialize options. So if we go back to the sphere and just click on it, it'll go ahead and replace our other object. If you wanna practice going out of edit mode and clearing your canvas, you can just go up here, go out of edit mode or hit T on your keyboard, control N to clear your canvas, grab another primitive, drag it out. If you don't wanna use this one, once you're in edit mode and just like, you know what, I don't wanna play with this one anymore. You can again, go out of edit mode, control N to clear your canvas, grab the sphere or grab the helix, drag it out go into edit mode, and you can actually swap between tools. So instead of clearing my canvas and going out of edit mode, which is perfectly fine, you can also just click on this sphere or this helix and that'll actually swap between selected tools that you have now. Now these are primitive tools, they're not sculptable just yet, but there are different options available to us. So if you ever accidentally like go out of edit mode, you hit T on your keyboard and then you're back in this state and you're like, oh no, and you hit control N and you're like, where did everything go? Nothing's been deleted, nothing's changed. All you have to do is go back over here, find what you were working on, drag it down on your canvas, go back into edit mode and you're right back where you started. Everything you've done to your object will be saved over here. You don't lose anything. It's always available for you to grab again. Now, if we go over here, so we have a sphere selected, it's on our canvas, we're in edit mode. And we go down here to initialize. We can change this H divide over here Let's go ahead and type in 12. Then I'm gonna hit the tab key. And I'm gonna type in 12 again, hit enter. And now we have a 12 by 12 sphere. And that's good enough, I suppose, to start uh, sculpting a head. However, like I said before, if you just start tapping on the object like you wanna sculpt on it, it's gonna tell you, before you can start sculpting, you're gonna to need to convert this primitive to a make polymesh 3D button. And the reason it's telling you that is because it still thinks it's a primitive state. If you wanna make any changes, like if you wanna go down here and make it a little Pac-Man head, or change the X, Y, or Z size to kinda of dial in exactly what you want, you can still do that. However, you're gonna see, if I go back up here with this primitive selected, and I say, make poly mesh 3D, this is gonna convert it to sculptable polygons and I'm gonna lose this ability to initialize. So it's just warning you, make sure this is initialized how you want before you hit this button. Now the good news is if I do hit make poly mesh 3D, now it's real polygons. We still have polyframe turned on, so we can turn that on or off if we want to. And now if we go down here to initialize, you're gonna see the initialize state has changed. These are now polygon initialize options, which we'll get to in a bit. But like I said before, the good news is if you if you were like, oh, you know what? I wish I had put in more divisions here. You can always go back to that. Here's a sphere 3D. Here's the PM 3D. That's the poly mesh 3D. So make poly mesh 3D made this tool out here. 
here's your original primitive. You didn't really lose anything. It's still sitting there in its primitive state. So if you wanted to be like, you know what? I wanted like 256 by 256. So I can just hit tab and hit enter and just type in 256 for both of those. Now I can go up here, I can hit make poly mesh 3D. Now I have two poly mesh sphere 3Ds. I have this one, which is 12 by 12, and I have this one, which is 256 by 256. Since we're going to be sculpting, I'm going to go ahead and keep this 256 by 256 sphere. And we'll go ahead and start using this to start sculpting. 